So you probably saw how good the Apple iPad Pro is. I mean, you saw how well it can edit videos, it can run games, it can run heavy applications like Final Cut Pro, and you also saw how good it can do multitasking with multiple displays. Well, this iPad Pro is a fully fledged MacBook 2024. And we saw so many reviews on this iPad Pro from so many creators across all the social media platforms. And they say the same thing. It's going to replace your MacBook and your PC because of its amazingly faster performance. But have you ever thought about how it works? I mean, behind all of those positive reviews and remarkable performance is of course this new Apple M4 chipset, which I am still processing that how Apple does that with their Apple Silicon. I mean, they have done an amazing job with this M4 chipset while keeping it extremely cool. And that may raise so many questions in your mind. Like Hamza, how is that possible? How is the single core performance is faster than the Core i9-14900K, which is almost a 2020 watt processor? Or how is its AI performance compared to the latest Snapdragon Elite X? Or how does it keep hitting in performance while being only 22 watt? Well friends, sit tight and watch this review till the end because I'm going to explain everything as I go forward in this review with proofs, examples and comparisons. So without wasting any time, I will start from benchmarks. Well, the Apple M4 provides top of the line benchmarks in this category. Before I say anything or compare it to other chipsets, let me just show you the benchmark scores first. In Intuitu version 10, it achieves a total score of 2,745,400 points. And with this course, this chipset tops the Enter to Virgin 10 benchmarks. It's even higher than the MediaTek Dimensity 9300 Plus, which is the latest chipset from the MediaTek. Now, if I break down these scores, the CPU achieved 723,817 points. The GPU achieved 1,120,143 points. The memory achieved 470,720 points and the UX achieved 430,720 points summing up to a total score of 2,745,400 points which is just insane I mean you can really see how capable this chipset really is in Intel 2 version 10 benchmarks now if I compare these scores to the MediaTek Dimensity 9300 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 as they currently hold the world's fastest chipset record in Intel 2 version 10 benchmarks, then the Dimensity 9300 is about 19.49% slower than this M4 chipset. And the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is about 18.06% slower than this M4 chipset, which is a huge difference. And this is all about its amazing CPU and GPU architecture, which I'm going to explain in a second. But as some of you may say, the iOS and Android chipset should be compared in other benchmarks like Geekbench 6. In the Geekbench 6, the Apple M4 achieved a single core score of 3810 points and a multi core score of 14677, which is just in freaking insane. Well, I'm not going to compare any Android chipsets here because I know it has already beaten the fastest and the most heaviest processor on the planet, the Intel Core i9-14900K, which is insane if you think about it. I mean, the Intel Core i9-14900K has 32 cores and consumes about 230 watts of power while clocked at 6 GHz. But still, this 22 watt chipset from Apple has outperformed that beast in the Geekbench 6 performance. You may ask, Hamza, how is that even possible? Well, let me show you the scores. If I compare the single core scores to the Intel Core i9-14900K, then the M4 is about 18.31% faster in single cores, <laughs> which is just insane. But in the multi-core, the Intel Core i9-14900K smashed this M4 chipset by 56%, as you can see the scores on the screen. But it is still remarkable that this chipset on the tablet can outperform a beast and a desktop PC. And that's the power of Apple Silicon. And that is why this chipset is so fast and fluid on this iPad Pro. Well, I said earlier that I don't want to compare the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, the MediaTek Dimensity 9300 and the Exynos 2400 to this chipset. But now I am going to compare it to give you an idea of how faster this M4 chipset really is in Geekbench 6 benchmarks. Well, in single core, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is about 49.50% slower than this M4 chipset. The Dimensity 9300 is about 51.94% slower than this 
M4 chipset. And the Exynos 2400 is about 53.75% slower than this M4 chipset, which is just mind blowing. And now in multi-core, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is about 49.50% slower. The Dimensity 9300 is about 64.28% slower. And the Exynos 2400 is about 71.28% slower. And I said about because these cores are really depend on the smartphone's variant that you are getting this chipset with. Well, let me add another category and this benchmarks. Usually, I only explain the Enter 2 version 10 and Gigwin 6 benchmarks. But now, I will also show you the benchmarks of the AI of these chipsets. Because it's been growing too fast. Apple said they've introduced the neural cores back from the Apple A11 Bionic chipset. And you know, they are not wrong. But for some reason, they were not promoting it. But this time, they are saying that this M4 chipset can do about 38 trillion operations per second, which is remarkable. But the fact that the Snapdragon XLite can do about 46 trillion operations per second is just groundbreaking. So, if I compare the AI performance of this M4 chipset to other chipsets like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, the MediaTek Dimensity 9300, and the Exynos 2400, and the Apple A17 Pro, then the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 can do about 34 trillion operations per second with its hexagon NPU. The Dimensity 9300 can do about 33 trillion operations per second with its MediaTek APO 790. Exynos 2400 can do about 44 trillion operations per second with its Samsung AI engine, which is insane. I mean, I wasn't aware of this, that the Exynos 2400 is so much powerful in AI. Well, finally, the Apple A17 Pro can do about 35 trillion operations per second with its neural cores. Now, let's compare these side by side. So, I am so surprised to say that the Samsung Exynos 2400 is about 14.63% faster than this M4 chipset in terms of AI, which is just so surprising. And the Snapdragon Electrix is about 16.87% faster than this M4 chipset in terms of AI benchmarks. And the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, Dimensity 9300, Apple S17 Pro are slower than this M4 chipset by 11.11%, 14.08%, and 8.22%. Well, this is because of this chipset's remarkable neural cores, which I will explain in a bit. But now, let's move on to the CPU configuration. Plus, if you are enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel will be absolutely gorgeous. It has 10 cores, including 4 ultra high performance cores clocked at 4.4 GHz, which is just fast. I mean, damn, 4.4 GHz on 4 cores are just out of this world and have 6 power efficiency cores clocked at 2.85 GHz. Plus, this chapter is based on ARM version 9 slash A instruction set architecture and has 16 MB of L2 cache memory. Plus, at the start, I told you that I will explain that how this chipset stays cool at full utilization. Well, it's made using the SMC 3 nanometer process node, which is much more efficient and likely to conduct less heat compared to the 4 nanometer process node. Plus, this chipset has over 28 billion transistors and only consumes about 20 watts of power. So, this is the reason that why this chipset is a lot faster and stays cooler than some other chipsets. And this configuration is a key reason behind its outstanding performance and beating the Intel Core i9-14900K and single core performance in Geekbench 6. So you saw how faster the CPU of this chipset is. But wait, now the GPU is coming. The Apple M4 features 10 core GPU and it's a remarkable piece of engineering. It's the reason behind all of that graphical power that this M4 chipset has. Well, for starters, this GPU has 10 execution units, 160 compute units, 128 sharing units, and 1280 shaders. This GPU also has hardware ray tracing and can support two displays at 4K. Plus, this GPU operates at a base frequency of 400 MHz and a peak frequency of 1.4 GHz. Now, in terms of iGPU flops, this GPU achieved about 4.1. TFLOPS. So if you want to edit videos on this chipset with iPad, then it can edit up to 4K HDR videos at full efficiency with up to 60 frames per second, as it can render up to 4x time faster and can also take full advantage of gaming. I mean, Apple talks about the gaming a lot these days, that their chipset can play console level games. Plus, 
dynamic caching optimized on chip memory to increase power efficiency and boost graphics performance in all kinds of apps and games. Well, here is a little clip of Assassin's Creed. You can see how smooth it is playing the game. Plus, you can play any game on this chipset and it will not lag because of this chipset's GPU. And you know what pushes further this chipset is its RAM and storage. So the Apple M4 features the fastest 12 channel LPDDR5 RAM with a memory frequency of 7500 MHz, which is one of the fastest RAM frequency. And this chipset has maximum bandwidth of 120 GB per second, which is just insane. And on the storage front, the chipset supports NVMe storage technology for faster read and write speeds, which is just amazing. And you know what's more amazing for you to subscribe to my channel. Just go ahead and smash that red button. And beside that red button, you may also see a bell icon. So press that also to never miss a review video like this one. Now let's talk about the features of this chipset. Well, on the display front, this chiplet has a frame motion engine. which now support two displays stacked up to give you one ultra rich display with a peak brightness of over 1000 nits normal and 1600 nits in HDR. Plus, the refresh rate varies from 10 Hz to 120 Hz to conserve battery life. Now, there are so many AI capabilities of this chipset, which at this point are a lot faster and better than the competitors. I mean, yeah, you can take advantage of this AI in your productivity with this M4 chipset and iPad Pro. So, its 16 core neural engine is top of the line at this point. And camera capabilities? Well, there is not much to talk about because this iPad Pro has only 12 megapixel camera and can record 4K 60 progress video and later can be edited in the Final Cut Pro. Now, this chiplet has top of the line connectivity. This Apple M4 chiplet supports Wi Fi 6E, 5G, and the Bluetooth 5.3. It also supports USB Type C Gen 3.2 and can connect USB C connectors with support for Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4 at a blazing speed of 40 gigabytes per second, which is just insane. Thunderbolt can support external display like the Pro Display XDR at full 6K resolution. Plus, you can also connect your iPhone camera to the Final Cut Pro with extremely fast connection that this chipset have, which is just amazing. I mean, it will help a lot of creators who edit videos for their social media. I mean, I don't have to connect my phone to transfer the files and then edit. I can just record with the iPhone and hit directly to the Final Cut Pro app on this iPad Pro. And that will really boost the creator's productivity. And that is what this iPad Pro really is for. Now, the final question remains. Is it worth buying the iPad Pro with this M4 chipset at $1,600 for the cellular model and $1,300 for the Wi-Fi only model. Well, at this point, it seems like a hefty investment. But considering what it can do is remarkable for a tablet that is only 5.1 mm thick. I mean, the ability to edit videos at 4K HDR, play console level games with good graphics, and can perform tasks comparable to a PC, it's totally worth it if you are in an Apple ecosystem. But if you are not, then this tablet with this chiplet is not for you my friend because you will not take the full advantage of this iPad Pro. However, if I had the money to buy it, I would have bought it blindly because I have seen what it can do. Well, as a YouTuber, editing videos on a PC takes a lot of time and consumes so much power. So if I have this iPad Pro, I can edit videos at whenever and wherever I want. I mean, I can edit videos at the top of the mountain or if I'm traveling, then I can just edit videos on the way. Plus, I can also also shoot with this 12 megapixel camera. So this iPad Pro is more productive if you use it for productivity. But if you are not someone who does productivity in the tech world, let's say you just want a tablet that does basic stuff like social media apps, reading and multimedia, then buddy, don't waste your heart and money on the $1600 iPad Pro because it's simply not for you. You can buy a simple tablet in the market in about $500 price point and that can do your basic tasks. So if you have been watching this review till now, first of all, thank you. And also tell me in the comment section that if you are going to buy this iPad Pro or not. So yeah, that's all for this review. I hope this review solved many of your problems. If it did, then please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to never miss a new video from my channel. And if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. So my name is Hamza, this is Headstack and see you in the next video. If you want to watch the full review of the Apple S17 Pro, then that video is right here. And if you want to watch the full review of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, then that video is right here. Thank you for watching.